Gil McNeil, the nursery manager here at Birkeland Gardens. And I'm Jesse McNeil and my husband and I are the owners and we also live here on the property. And today we're going to take a look at one of our beds that we want to give a makeover to here next to our house. And Gil is going to talk through some of the tools that we'll be using as well as um, creating a plan for what we're going to do to the bed. So before we get started with the bed, I'm just going to go over some of the tools that um, we're going to use in um, the you know, pruning and, and uh, getting the bed prepped out. Um, you know, tools that you typically think about, but we'll also show you how to use them and, and the right ones to use. And there's better qualities than others. So obviously we all know what uh, this is. It's a leaf rake. And we'll just go through and, and rake up the uh, loose material with, uh, with this leaf rake. And a good quality one, one that has some stiffness to it and it'll do a, a good job. So um, kind of a main tool that you want for cleanup year round. Another tool that's used quite often is, it's got a weed hanging to it, on it, is uh, we call it a hula hoe. It's a scuffle type hoe. Pull it back and forth and it slices the root down below the surface and then you can use that along with the rake to kind of to loosen up the, the, the weeds and get them out of the bed. Another tool that kind of falls along the line of uh, getting the area prepared would be this pick matic. There's the pick part of it and the matic. We'll be using the matic more and it's a, it's a grubbing tool and there's a certain way to use that and I'll show you a little bit later when we get into the bed and, and kind of demonstrate that but I use these all the time for loosening up the soil. So we've got also a, a steel rake, it's an older one but it'll work just fine and this will a little bit stiffer and it'll pull the, the weeds along and make some piles that we can pick up. Another tool, I've got a, a spade here, we've got several spades, I've got a longer one I'll, you might see in the photo later but um, straight edge um, this has got a nice chrome uh, blade and this will slice right down through the soil fortunately here we have softer soil it doesn't have any rocks in it but at home um, when I'm working my soil has a lot of rocks and it, it goes through it you have to work around the rocks sometimes but this will this will slice through and we'll we'll see how that um, how that works in in the garden when we're lifting plants or we also may create a, a bed edge right here um, as well and the spade will work well for that. A few hand tools that we use, the one tool that I carry with me almost all the time is a pair of hand pruners. Um, these are Felcos, I don't uh, sell Felcos but they're pretty much the, the one that most landscapers and nursery people use. This is fairly reasonable, you can find them on Amazon, uh, your nurseries stores or whatever and they literally you know the home gardener would last you if you don't lose them it'll last you a, a lifetime so um, you can buy replacement blades if you wanted for them but uh, a pair of hand pruners um, and, and then a hand saw like this you know get it decent one they these probably are 20 to 30 dollars to you know to buy one of these this one is also a felco but there's other brands that are good and it has a little locking mechanism it's a folding one pops out like that and it's just a short saw but it does a really good job of uh, cutting a branch so that's uh, something you, you can carry in your pocket fold it put it in your pocket when you're not using it and uh, when I'm doing pruning out here I'll be using that these are some um, hedge pruners and these are uh, really nice ones these would retail for right around close to a hundred dollars but I've had these for almost 20 years. I bought them used from another landscaper. And I use these all the time and have a little longer reach to them. And they're really nice. He was told they last a lifetime and they lasted him until he had to get rid of them. And then I, uh, and I've had them for 20 years since and they're still working great. So I'm gonna reach down and get a, a, some loppers here, two different ones. So these are more the economy ones and um, they're good enough we use those uh, from time to time and uh, and they'll do a, an okay job but again stepping up a little bit again this is a felco product as well um, this will do a better job for you um, a little bit lighter weight got aluminum handle 
blades are replaceable and I've had these for probably again 20 years or something like that or close to it so so there's the hand tools we're going to be stepping into this bed behind me and kind of uh, we'll be talking about what we're going to be doing with it um, doing the cleanup and rearranging the plants and uh, so that's our next step I'm going to take three things with me actually. so we're going to get started with uh, um, getting this bed prepped out for redesigning and we're just going to clean off all the debris um, there's some needles I'm going to reach under here clean. we're just getting the surface debris off right now I'm also going to talk about I'm going to talk about herbicides a little bit um, and if you're totally organic they're not a problem just be sure to pull your weeds and get as much root as possible but this bed was sprayed with a glyphosate to kill some weeds about a month ago so those weeds that were growing are uh, have died and there are some new ones that have the seeds of uh, germinated and they're cut they're coming back so we're getting that this debris off to start with so we can finish weeding and then prepping our ground so these piles will be hauled away to either the compost or to a to a dump pile and we can do that right on the property so we've got a couple of tools here that it will uh, slice through and, and do some grubbing or uh, weeding for us too. So this hula hole we, we, we saw a little bit earlier, it just the action just goes back and forth. Our ground is pretty soft, it's you know wet right now we've had rain and and this is nice ground there's no rocks in it it'll be a little different possibly most most gardens have uh, rocks in it and it's, a, it's, it's an issue so, so I'm going and slicing just below the surface to get those there's actually some perennials coming along I'm pointing to one there and one here and we'll be moving those here in a bit we're going to clean some of these plants out or move some of these plants out before you can see the, what we've got going on there not sure what that is and then we can re-rake this again I'll show you the other tool, the Maddox, a little bit heavier duty, and it just swing it lightly on the surface, rubbing that out. So, and that's that's those tools. I'm gonna grab the rake one more time and do a little surface rake on these. We don't have a rototiller here today, but we'll have one in um, another day and we'll get that as part of our prep. We're going to uh, also till this soil. So we're going to move plant. The next step, we're going to move uh, plants aside and we'll either move them to another area or reposition them in this bed. So I've got a dwarf rhododendron right next to me. I'm not sure what the name of this one is. It's finished blooming and uh, these dwarf rhododendrons, I never did head them. You can, you can brush off that but I do come back I do shear them lightly I'll wait a little bit till this growth comes up a little bit and I'll take the the hedge trimmers I had and do a light shearing on them and you'll still get all the buds for next year you don't want to wait too long to do that though if you wait too long you lose your flowers for next year so so we're gonna dig this uh, rhododendron and it has roots that are not real deep so it'll come out pretty easy. I haven't pre-dug it, so I'm just gonna go around it with the spade. And as soon as I get around it, I'll, we'll lift it and just set it aside. Like I said, rhododendrons have pretty flat roots. We've, when I was doing landscaping, we used to dig some pretty big rhododendrons. I used to salvage a lot of them that got to be I didn't need that many of them at my house. A lot of them were big and didn't need it. So I'm just lift that out of the hole. You can see it's a nice root ball. Um, it's not sunny today. I can leave this out for a few days, but you want to make sure that you get something around the roots, some mulch, or put it back in a hole somewhere that 
it doesn't dry out around the outside part of the root. So we're going to set this one aside. So the next thing we're going to uh, move is going to be this fig tree. Fig trees in our area, they they can be bothered by the cold, um, you, you get too much freezing, it can hurt the branches. So, but it doesn't, it won't usually kill the plant in our area. So we've got new growth here that's coming on, and next year I think we'll move this and try to protect it during the winter time. But it produced a, a lot of figs, so. Uh, we'll cut off all the dead, uh, move it to a spot, and again, um, give it some protection during the wintertime next year. And we'll have figs on it on this year. So Jesse and I are standing in the bed, and we've done a little bit of prep, and we'll continue on with that. And so um, certain plants are just going to stay right where they're at. We've got a golden spreader, Nordman fir, in front of us here, and I think that's a good place for it, and we'll work with that and a Chief Joseph Lodgepole Pine behind me and there's a huge uh, hydrangea uh, behind me and that was about 35 years old. So Jesse, I think we're gonna um, just start what we call do like a, a site design here. We're not gonna okay. have a formal plan okay. where it's drawn out on paper, but we're going to um, get the soil all prepped We'll maybe add some rocks and and then we'll go out to the nursery and pick some plants and put them into these different things so, so what do you think of that plan i think that sounds good i'm glad we're keeping the golden spreader i really like the yellow right, and i know yeah, yeah and travis loves the chief joseph behind you yeah. we see that from our kitchen window and we love how that turns bright yellow in the winter so yeah. we're excited to keep that and uh yeah just get this looking a lot better i know we also talked a little bit about what do you call that the bed line yeah we call yeah. it a bed line and mm -hmm. um i'm gonna grab a, a spade and we'll show how we can define that a little okay. bit better and one other thing that we brought a little bit of extra soil in here we may bring in some extra soil to do some contouring we call it undulation or the just a soil uh, some highs and lows okay. and and some rock and that'll get some interest as well to the bed along with the plants and and everything so yeah, yeah. rather than just having a flat it also gets better drainage okay. and the soil gets a little warmer as well good sounds like a good plan yeah we're we're doing um the uh bed line here today with the spade and and uh so we'll pick a little bit of a line and uh we can draw a line but i'm just going to do it for demonstration and i've made it couple of cuts here. I'm going to do one more like right there. A little pressure there straight down. There we go. And then I'm going to grab another tool that's right in front of me here. It's Maddox. And I'm just going to do light, light rubbing. And because I sliced there creating that line and now we create a little bit of depth here, right here, and this is our bed line. This could be line trim now to keep that definition. This is a maintenance thing, so you, as weeds or grasses grow in here, you have to do this occasionally to clean clean it up. Line trimming will keep it nice and clean, but uh, occasionally you have to come back and, and uh, redefine that because this will fill in with dirt as well. So nice, clean, crisp line that will define that bed, and we'll do that with the this whole bed that will be done when we're completed with the, this project on this bed. So thanks for watching today um, and uh, we'll be posting more videos as this project progresses. And we just want to remind you to be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and give us a like and if you have any questions about what you saw in today's video you can just leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. We'll see you next time.